Hey guys, Patrick Smith here with AeroMediaPros.com. Today we're going to do an unboxing of a DJI HD Downlink light bridge system that DJI sent to us. I will mention that this is a prototype, so some of the stuff you see in this box may not be exactly what you receive in the production packages, but we did want to at least get it out, start testing it, thought we'd do a quick unboxing for you. So let's go ahead and see what's inside. Right away you notice it's very nicely packed but the two components on the top looks like this is the receiver machined aluminum a high quality aluminum case and then the transceiver same thing also a nice high quality machined aluminum case very sweet looks like we have a box of wires and stuff right below here go through some of these mm. this is going to be your D bus plug looks like a servo cable, the small end. This is going to plug into your transceiver. You'll notice there's a D bus port that's going to plug right in there. And then this is going to plug into your A2 flight control system. We're going to want to go into the A2 flight control software and make sure that we have D bus selected because now instead of using the receiver that's built into the A2, we're going to be using this as the receiver. We're going to communicate with our Futaba radios or radios through the light bridge up to the receiver and then this is going to control the copter through the D-Bus. So go in there, set up it in everything in the software, do your stick configurations, your calibrations and make sure all your endpoint adjustments are correct. So that's one of the first things you want to do on the setup. Looks like they give us an HDMI cable. This will probably go from the camera system up into the light bridge. This is an SD video, so you'll see there's two ports right here. One is the HDMI downlink, which this is where this one would plug into. And then you have an SD downlink, which if you guys remember on the GCU of the Zim use, it has a video out. You can plug this straight in and get that SD video and plug it straight in here. So you have both options. You can either do an SD video or you can go with the HDMI wire and get the HD video. So it gives you that option. Looks like just a main normal USB plug. This will probably be used to, if you need to update this or make some changes, you can plug it into the update there. And we can also go through the USB port here. So this will probably come in handy. We'll probably have some software and stuff like that to download. Ah, this is gonna be the trainer cord. On the back of Futaba radios and like Spectrum radios, you're gonna have a trainer port. This is going to plug directly into the light bridge unit right there. And then we'll have these trainer ports that will plug right into here. And this will go onto the back of the controller. So if I was using like a Futaba 14SG or Futaba 8FG for my copter control, this will plug right into there. And we're going to now control the copter through the light bridge system. And then you have one other one. This is probably for like the same thing, a Futaba or maybe a Spectrum radio. We're going to plug into the trainer port of our second radio, and that's going to be used for the gimbal control. So we're going to control both things. Both radios are going to plug into the light bridge, our gimbal control, and our copter control. And we're going to be controlling that and sending the signal through the light bridge system there. So that's where that plugs in. This is going to be the main power cord. The light bridge unit does have a battery built into it. You turn it on right here with the power button, you press it once, and you press and hold it, and it's gonna light up similar fashion to the way a Phantom Vision does. When you need to charge the battery, you can use a power plug that they supply right here with any three to six volt LiPo. And it's also gonna come with an AC adapter to where we can power it straight from the wall, and we can also charge it straight from the wall. So the AC adapter will be in the kit too. Looks like lastly, we have some antennas. These are the dipole antennas. These will just screw right onto the end here. And then we have a couple of high gain antennas. They give us three total, so you have a spare. The high gain antennas is just gonna clip and press right into the ports right here. When you're flying with this, you want these facing out to the sides. So just like that, and that'd be ready to go. While I have this on my hand, I'll go over a couple ports that it has that we didn't go over. One is the gimbal port. 
this is the main plug right here that's going to that's going to communicate from your copter to the transceiver right here. So this will plug into like the IOSD, a cam port of the IOSD. You can power it right here with these two plugs. And then you have the main plug that's gonna go right into the transceiver right there. Now we also have the USB port. There's a link button right here. So if for some reason this lost a bind, we could go ahead and press the link button and we could link and pair these two together again. And then we have two communication lights. One of them is going to be the control light, letting you know that we have a direct control and that's operating correctly. And then we have a video light. This is going to let us know that we have a direct control and a direct link to the video, showing you that that video link is good there. Turn it on the back side, and we already went over. We have two ports. One is the HDMI port for the signal coming in from your camera or an SD port signal coming from an SD. So that's all the ports on there. See if we missed anything on this. If we went over the transmitter port. That's where we're going to plug in the two cables there for our radios. We have an HDMI to USB output. I believe this is going to be able to connect to some Android devices and show a picture on an Android device. And we have a regular HDMI output so we can run a straight HDMI to like maybe our big screen TV or something like that. And then lastly, we have the USB connection. So that is the entire Lightbridge setup. You can see it's pretty compact. I was impressed with the size of the transceiver. I thought it was going to be a lot bigger than it actually is. So we'll easily find a space of this, the space for that on the S1000s. What we're going to do right now is take this down, install it into a copter, and get it up in the air, do a test flight, and show you guys some live HD footage. So watch for that in our next video. Thank you.